Oh, there it is. There it is. It's so blue this time. It's so blue. How many times have we seen this now? Uh, the VGA Sierra logo? I'm not sure. It's been a number of times at this point, though. So many. I, this was my favorite Sierra logo. Uh, I like welcome it. to Space Quest V, everybody. It's the new muta- the next mutation. Uh, my favorite in this Sierra uh, Space Quest series. Uh, mm. I don't know. I, I think you said yours was two. Mine was two, yes. But I, I'm, it's maybe because I haven't played this one all the way through. Oh, great. So you're in for a treat. Um, uh, you know, I'm... I'm I am a bit of a Star Trek nerd as well. Not nearly as much as like our good friend John, but um, this one is very Star Trek centric. Um, I hope that you've got a good Shatner because uh, our main antagonist is Captain Quirk. Oh my who, God. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's start with the introduction because of course, right? Of course. Yes. <clears throat> we wait. Any minute now. Oh, even that font. <laughs> I feel like this had like the best uh, like production values of any of the uh, Space Best games, and possibly any of the uh, Sierra VGA like era games, like aside from like Leisure Suit Larry Seven and so on. Roger Wilco, the next mutation. <laughs> So this is a fairly divisive um, Space Quest game because this one was only made by Mark Crow. Um, oh, really? Yeah, so only one of the two guys of uh, from Andromeda did was involved in the creation of Space Quest V. It was kind of like how uh, Monkey Island, Three Curse of Monkey Island, was kind of divisive because... Um, I think I think it was either only Ron Gilbert or only Tim Schafer was involved. It was the right. Same thing, right. But all right, Roger it up. Captain's log: SCS Excalibur, star date twenty seven oh nine sixty seven. Fleet Admiral Roger Wilco commanding. The Excalibur is on course to investigate the mysterious disappearance of several ships in the uncharted region of space known as the Minuto Triangle. I no doubt have been selected for this mission due to my great achievements as a military leader and matchless diplomatic skills. Can I also say thank you to uh, Mark Crow for making sure that you have to click to get through these. Oh uh, my god! Yes, thank you. (laughs) I I agree. Uh, I go forward with total confidence in my ship and crew, yet I am vaguely uneasy. I cannot put memories of traveling to the future and meeting my son out of my mind. Each night my dreams are haunted by the image of the woman he said would one day be my wife. I know she's out there. Somewhere. But that's not important right now. The fate of trillions rides on the decisions I may have to make in the next several hours. As captain of the Star Confederacy's proudest flagship, I must follow the supreme guideline. To boldly go where no man has... No, 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 no. Um, to bravely traverse where no creature has uh, traversed... No, that, that's not it. No. Ah, skip it. <laughs> oh. I love everything about this game. (laughs) (laughs) It's so fucking well done. (laughs) Admiral, strike ship's coming in at point three five. Alert, alert, alert. (laughs) Shields up, battle stations, lock weapons. Neutron beams locked, proton torpedoes armed. Tactical, fire neutron beams, helm hard to port. Ugh. (laughs) <laughs> Cadet Wilco What in the name of the Seventh Star Cluster Are you doing in the bridge simulator Oh good Get your sorry carcass out of there And get back To class where you belong Space Cadet And if I catch <laughs> you there again without permission I'll have you tossed out of the academy So fast you'll get Warp Disorient 
Temptation! <laughs> <laughs> That's not that not the best Shatner, honestly. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. Oh. <laughs> like the subtle shit that they do in this too, like how the uh, the simulator is the Millennium Falcon. I know it's great. <laughs> <laughs> His illusions of spacefaring grandeur cruelly shattered by Captain Quirk. Roger Wilco exits from the bridge simulator into the hallways of the Star Confederacy Space Academy where he has enrolled himself in an attempt to realize his lifelong dream of becoming a starship captain. The last several months have not been easy for our hero, what with having to juggle time between skipping classes, snoozing through lectures, and spending long moments considering the implications of actually opening a textbook. But our fearless former sanitation engineer has stumbled resolutely past these obstacles, pursuing his goal with unwavering determination. Blissfully unaware that fate has about to hurl another spitball in his direction. I mean, he so should not be everything. Used to it by now. A, a lot of it does uh, does auto um, advance, so. Hopefully you can you can keep up. I'll I'll that. try to read fast, but not too no. fast. No, that was good. That was about perfect. So, <clears throat> ah, welcome to StarCon Academy, everybody. I love oh, it. I love, I love everything about this, and like this, just the design of it, like the rotunda. Honestly, like you should probably be walking on the floor if we're talking like space physics and what. But it's fantastic. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to be spending a lot of time fawning over and like looking at a lot of things in this game. Because um, there's just so much to it. There's, it's a very dense game, too. It's very so. pretty. Very pretty. Yeah, I hope that you guys don't mind that we're <coughs> going to be advancing the plot a little bit slowly. Nah, people love that. This aging behemoth has outlived its intended lifespan by several decades and will soon be heading for the scrapyards. Enterprise here. An Alpha Class Strike Fighter from the Colony Worlds. This baby has it all. Speed, maneuverability, and enough firepower to blast apart a comet. Too bad you'll probably never even get within shouting distance of one in your natural lifetime. <laughs> the StarCon Registry lists this ship as the personal launch of Ambassador Beatrice Wankmeister from the G6 Quadrant. You dimly recall hearing her name once before, but the effort to remember anything further results in nothing more than a storm of misfired brain synapses and a dull headache. Well, I remember where I've heard that name before, even if Roger oh doesn't. My. Yes, well, <clears throat> it's a hard name to forget, It honestly. is, indeed. Yeah. Through this doorway is the Academy's bridge simulator. The scene of your latest humiliation at the StarCon Academy. This panel, when it works, allows the user to call up a 3D holographic schematic of the StarCon Space Academy. Let's check that out. Darn! The holomap directory isn't working right now, and it's a shame, because the SMAP system is really cool looking, with Gurad shading texture mapping and ray traced images of every room in the complex. <laughs> I love how they, they troll you with like, oh yeah, 3D stuff. Because like, this great, was the era but it's not where, <laughs> like, where like 3D was kind of taking over mm -hmm. and I think that that was just like a middle finger to all of the 3D games that they were saying were making 2D games like this irrelevant. <clears throat> Absolutely. By the way, Andrew is not with us. By the way, today. Yes, he'll, uh, he'll... Andrew was uh, has had some uh, packing stuff that he had to do, so he is not going to be joining us today. But he will return uh, in two more episodes. Yeah. So you got it. Yeah. All right. So that was janitorial. <clears throat> Who cares about the janitorial closet? Not me. I'm not a janitor anymore. Exactly. Let's take a look at some ships. A Deltan frigate from the G6 Quadrant. Hopefully a ship like this will one day be yours. Provided, of course, that you make it through the StarCon Academy's rigorous training regimen. This three-man fighter was captured from the dreaded pirates of Pestilon during their daring attempt to escape the confines of Space Quest 3. 
<laughs> Named for his beloved wife, this sleek corvette called Lady Plus Bucker is reserved for the Academy Commandant's use exclusively. Recently, several freshmen were disciplined for scandalously altering the ship's name as a cadet initiation prank. <laughs> <clears throat> Just another interesting but totally useless example of technological engineering at work. They they put a lot of effort into uh, reacting to nearly everything that you did in this game, which is a problem with a lot of point-and-click adventure games uh, that I really kind of appreciated about what the sort of the design of Space Ghost 5. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I gotta clear my throat. Sorry, everybody. Go again. Ships of every size and description occupy the docking bay. Must have missed the ship. This patrol craft was damaged in a skirmish with smugglers on the rim of the galaxy and is currently undergoing a major overhaul. Fortunately, it suffered left da less damage than the ship Roger tried to place in hyperspace before leaving space dock. <laughs> this is that's actually a kind of a clue. Uh, I think it's also in the uh, manual that you get with Space Quest Five. Is sort of like a pilot or a, a captain's manual, um, but I'll show you how we die with that later. But that whole bit about um, entering hyperspace before leaving space dock, yeah, um, yeah, bad things happen. Bad. This bulk cargo freighter contains supplies for the colony on Clorox too. <laughs> Trainers like this one are used to instruct cadets in basic space light techniques. Due to the relative lack of skill by cadets, these ships suffer a high rate of attrition. The current record for a number of ships wrecked stands in three, and is currently held by Roger. Which includes a notable incident where he totaled a ship without even leaving the hangar. Odds are two to one among his own classmates that Raj will break his own record before graduating. <laughs> This door to the conference room A. It is. It, room A. It, <clears throat> this window looks into the conference room. Currently, there is some kind of meeting going on. Your security clearance is too low to enter this room. In fact, it's so low, you need a pass just to go to the restroom. <laughs> You've always wondered what this panel does, but have never been able to figure out its function. The explanation was probably given in one of the many class lectures you slept away during your tenure here at the Academy. <laughs> right, let's move on. Ba -da -da boom We're almost to class, guys. Oh my we god. We might make it before the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at ships. Yeah. <clears throat> this sleek little beauty is for sale and can be yours for a mere 10,000 buckazoids. Dial 155 Good Cars and ask for some. And ask for Fester Blatz, of course. Yep, the man himself. This ship once belonged to two guys from Andromeda but was seized when one of them walked out on his 10,000 buckazoid tab at the Academy Lounge. The SCS Lollipop. A good ship. <laughs> for sale items, academy, social events, and scores for the next SAT test when they become available are posted on this bulletin board. This door leads to one of the academy's classrooms. Currently, the students in your Space Piloting 101 class are taking the Starcon Aptitude Test. The SAT. Fellow members of the tightly knit Starcon Cadet Brigade. So this is another thing that doesn't didn't happen very much is like a lot of interaction with other characters. <coughs> um, I I felt like it was sort of lacking in the other Space Quest games. You're doing a whole lot of like puzzle solving on your own, but not really talking to many other. <laughs> Drop dead, Wilco. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> uh, oh, and another uh, innovation of Space Quest V was you have the talk icon. Yeah. You also have the give orders icon. <laughs> so as a uh, as a, a, a <clears throat> spaceship captain, spoiler alert, uh, eventually this actually becomes very useful. Did your mother have any children who lived, Wilco? <laughs> 
This locker is used by various professors to store teaching aids for their respective classes. The door won't open! It's a locked locker. It's a locked locker. Okay, let's go to class. <clears throat> the obvious Star Trek sound effects. He got points! A uh, points! Also, the Peanuts voice. Uh, sorry I'm late, Professor. You mean... the... Oh! Starcon aptitude test is today! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. I'll get started right away. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, what's that? C come and talk to you after class? <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, all right. Con all right. <laughs> Starcon aptitude test. Oh, my God. Gronko is commanding a Nova class scout ship when he finds himself face to face with three Horak battle cruisers. He should, uh,. Uh, surrender in the face of impossible odds, pretend they aren't there, activate the ship's self-destruct mechanism, beam over a pick-you-up bouquet, uh, uh, reboot. Uh, uh, Alright, well, let's save. I like the variation on the Jeopardy theme. Let's <laughs> <laughs> Doki, now, uh, um, alright, so, uh, we can take the test normally, uh, but, uh, yeah, we also have the option to cheat. If we cheat badly, however, like, uh, we try and, uh, cheat off of this guy's, uh, test while this robot is watching us, Let's see what the robot is. A Protomatic 9000 anti-cheat droid floats malevolently about the classroom, maintaining a vigilant lookout for any student hijinks during the SAT test. Currently, the droid is monitoring you with its visual scanners. Best keep your eyes on your own test. Now, I'll get ourselves kicked out once, just so you can see. <laughs> Uh-oh, busted. <laughs> Maybe you should have taken the correspondence course. Alright, let's just do it. Alright, now, let's cheat properly. Let's but cheat let's, properly. Let's get a, look at our, uh, let a good, get a good look at our uh, classmates as well. Yeah. Oh, that's the parkomatic there again. Cadet Schleppo appears to be dull and stodgy, much like yourself. Cadet Oftboffer is one of the horniest individuals you're likely to meet. <coughs> Cadet Antenna has been the brunt of many jibes concerning her cranial appendages. Woof is the senior Ambujitsu champion at the academy. <laughs> Cadet Muckblob likes to keep one eye out for trouble, which frequently causes him to bump into things. You have a strange suspicion you've seen this woman before, but you just can't quite place her. Check out the brain pan on this guy. He's probably smarter than your whole family. <laughs> Alright, well, let's cheat off this guy. Let's do it. <clears throat> oh, second item from the bottom. Okay. Like how he stare, he looks over at you when you do it. Okay, beam over, pick you up, okay. I guess that's the right answer. That's the right answer. Yep. Alright, when encountering an alien ship for the first time, you should immediately A. Open fire with every weapon at your disposal, broadcast Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries over the comlink, beam your entire crew over to their ship as a gesture of goodwill, B. Then A. None of the above. <laughs> Alright. Before beaming down to unexplored planet for the first time, you should make sure to check to see that your seatbelt is fastened and tray tables are locked securely in the upright position, your fly, your life insurance coverage, the fester value in your oxygen mask, the planet's atmospheric readings. Oh, man. <laughs> this is a hard... This is 
Probably right. Probably. Yeah. You're marooned on an alien planet with no weapon. And a killer android is out for your blood. You should A. Gather basic ingredients to make gunpowder and fashion a cannon from vines and sticks. B. Stuff a banana in its exhaust pipe. C. Drop a big rock in the robot and shout, Hasta la vista, baby. Roll in the mud and camouflage yourself. Climb a tree, flap your arms wildly, and scream, Tweet, tweet, at the top of your lungs in order to mimic the mating behavior of the ruby-throated actor. Swine Falcon is a diversionary tactic. Yeah. You're on EVA with a partner, and you notice his face is turning blue, and he's clutching wildly at his throat. This is a sign that you will soon need a new partner. In a burst of creative <laughs> insight, he has created a new dance called the Moonwalk. He is suffering from a vitamin deficiency and needs to eat more leafy green vegetables. He fell for the old golf ball in the air hose trick. A and D. <laughs> I think so. Um, I now I'm just gonna note that it's entirely possible we are going to actually lose because I think this is on a timer. But let's just keep going. All right. To ensure that your crew's microwave meals are heated adequately and evenly on board your ship, you should wrap everything in aluminum foil. Cook each meal at the maximum power settings for 45 minutes. Put a live space varmint in which e which e with each meal so that you can more easily determine when it's done. Huck the thing and settle for roasting wieners on the maneuvering jets. Inject a radioactive plutonium isotope into each piece of food. When it glows, it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> the answers don't matter, so. <laughs> if Grebe leaves the Crab Nebula at 3200 GST Galactic Standard Time and travels at 9.75 million ZPM, how long will it take him to reach the planet Davicon S? If he has the solar wind at his back. 49.3 hours. He will never reach Davicon 5. The solar wind is highly unstable and will blow him off course. 3.75 standard days. 49.30 GST. Never. The neutron star at the center of the Crab Nebula is so massive that Grebe's ship can never reach escape velocity. <laughs> <Gone. laughs> How fast does light travel through a vacuum? <laughs> uh, very, very, fast. very, um, very, very, very fast. It depends if there's an uh, upright or canister I vacuum. Felt like, uh, as Roger, like this would be the one question that is really good at being <clears throat> a janitor. So. Yeah. Which is an example of a fuzzy boundary, the area in space between two planetary bodies, where a smaller third object is not clearly under the gravitational influence of either. The event horizon of a super black hole. The place where a receding hairline gives way to bare scalp. The point at which <laughs> the, <laughs> the marginal utility of trying to squeeze the last bit of toothpaste from the tube is offset by the opportunity cost of going to the store for a new one. <laughs> I'll go with C because it's close to home. To successfully accomplish a manual mo molecular reintegration bypass on a standard transporter unit, you should A. Reverse the phase polarity of the interface grid B. Jiggle the handle C. Pray fervently to whatever deity you happen to believe in D. C. Then B. E. Switch to us at Sprint Switch, Switch to U.S. Sprint Sorry yeah. Oh yeah, Oh, and uh, for a brief period of time, uh, Sierra was sponsored by Sprint, the uh, the phone company. Wow. So, there's a lot of weird, like, Sprint ads added to the game. I mean, it's all, like, jokingly, but even then, uh, they were, like, the the owners, briefly, of uh, the Imagination Network. Right. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if they were the owners, but they definitely, like, spent money on INN, so... Um, yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of which, uh, something that we should probably do on uh, on Seattle Saturday one of these days is there has been an INN revival, uh, which happened again recently, and so now you can find and download the uh, the old school Sierra Imagination Network client and uh, join to a private server. That's awesome. All right. It's really cool. I've been doing it recently with uh, some of my friends at the uh, Classic Gamers Guild, um, and it's great playing like uh, Eserbius and Twinian and uh, like hanging out in Casino Land and everything again. Oh, it brings me back. Classics. 
Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, so D then B. C then B. All right. Oh, that's the clock. The test's over already. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I agree that cleaning the academy crest is an appropriate punishment for being late to class. Uh, I'll get right on it. Oh, we didn't. We somehow did not uh, hit the uh, time limit. I think probably because we're actually running like a reasonable uh, clock speed on the game. But we are uh, well over time. Way today, over I wanted time. To get us, I wanted to get us at least to this point before we uh, adjourned for this episode. But uh, ah, nice pose, enjoying myself. Beautiful. Let's. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you folks again next time. Uh, and thank you very much for joining us in Space Class Five. I'm super excited about this. Uh, I hope that you're going to enjoy it as well, Matt. Um, I already and, am. Uh, I already am. Oh yeah. You know. Right. Bye, Bye, everybody. Everyone. You know, it's just great to read again, too. I know. It really is. I'm looking forward to seeing the characterization of a lot of these characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Bye. Bye.